An onward march, the Praetorian guards moving into position, ready to strike on an enemy city. Oh my god, these units are incredible, and actually the newly buffed Romans are incredible. Let us jump in and see what they're all about. And I think it makes sense to start here. What's actually changed about the Romans since the last update and the update before? Well, in a nutshell, they've gotten so much better. Not only have expansionist cultures been buffed, their ability is now free, their stars are now easier to earn, but also their trait, Legion's Finest, now provides a extra research discount for Imperial power. A very late technology, and that used to be useful because that's where their Praetorian guards were hidden. However, with the latest update to humankind, even that has changed. You get them at the start, not the end. They're much easier to upgrade into, and all of their opposing units have had their upkeep increased, give or take. One of the key strengths, though, is where it's positioned in the tech tree now. You can upgrade straight from warriors to either swordsmen or your Praetorian guards. Every culture now can upgrade from warrior to swordsman, but the crucial part is, that's always been a thing, the real key change here is that these swordsmen are now replaced by the Praetorian guards. So you can go straight from warrior, up to them. It also raises some interesting questions. Do I train any swordsmen at all? Do I just train warriors? We'll unpack a little bit of that as we go. And actually, let's jump into the tech tree and have a look at just what these warriors can do, right? City defense, the very first technology you can choose to unlock, unlocks your warriors. So they are sorted. A reasonably strong unit, it's had its upkeep and stuff reduced as well, so it's a little bit stronger than it used to be. Then, jump along the tech tree, bronze working, but don't worry about the spearmen because it's actually in a different line, right? Here, boom, swordsman. Warriors, straight to swordsmen as soon as you get into the classical era. The first tech in the ancient era, and then the first tech in the classical era, and of course, as the Romans, my swordsmen now are actually superseded or replaced by the Praetorian Guards, so these bad boys from turn one can be upgraded into Praetorian Guards. There is of course a, a slight downside to this, a double-edged blade if you'll forgive the pun. Here I am with my warrior ready to upgrade, but as you can see, I'm missing iron. You will still need iron to get your Praetorian Guards. However, since the most recent balance changes, you don't need this strategic resource iron to build swordsmen. So even if you're playing as the Romans or not, you can upgrade your warriors straight to swordsmen regardless. So don't worry, if you don't like the Romans, don't fear, because you'll still have fast swordsmen. However, in my case, I need iron, which means I need this iron, which means I need this city. I don't have any of my own, and I can't trade anywhere to get any either. A difficult spot, but not impossible. I took my units to this city and took it over. One of the key things that you want to consider, though, is do I have an appropriate culture beforehand? You might want to choose the Assyrians for the extra land movement. The Hittites for extra combat strength. I went with the Assyrians because their unit, similarly to the swordsman actually in the Praetorian Guard, is unlocked at the very start of the era. It's relatively strong and has relatively low upkeep. And just like that, bing bang boom, here's my city, here's my iron, and now I'm ready to upgrade my warriors or swordsmen into the guard. And however you secure your iron, hopefully easier than mine, you can then jump through an upgrade. The upgrade cost is pretty low, particularly from the Swordsman, because these two units essentially occupy the same slot in the tech tree now, similar to the way that Civilization V or Civilization VI handles unique units. It replaces the unit within the class, rather than operating kind of alongside it in this weird space. So now, boom, with 45 gold each, again, very cheap. Make sure you save up a little bit of gold beforehand though, like I did. You'll be able to upgrade into the Praetorian Guards, who upgrade from the swordsman not only with their extra strength, the key part, but also that unit class upgrade, tactical superiority. I'll talk about it more in a little bit, but basically it's like you're flanking people all the time so long as you have a buddy Praetorian guard to walk alongside your aggressor. And once you've got a hold of your iron, preferably early on, I think you know the strategy. It looks a little something like open city, find Praetorian guard, Bill Praetorian Guard. Now, uh, we are in the medieval era. I chose to transcend as the Romans because I reckon even an era later, even an era out of date, they're still going to be good enough. Let's give them a whirl. Have a look at the manual battle. They've chosen to fight me and looks like they're bringing in some reinforcements as well. Okay, this is going to be a good fight. Now, remember, 
The Praetorian Guards benefit from their tactical superiority, right? Rear attack, that flanking bonus, applies always whenever you have an ally adjacent to the target, no matter their position. So, let's have a wee test. Here's a target, here's me, and here's my ally adjacent to them. So, we will get the effect playing out here. Now, unfortunately, this isn't a great test because I'm on a river, or I'm on low ground, or I'm in a forest. Let's just have a look. 39 strength, we're getting plus 5 from friendly tactical units, just from having units nearby, and an additional plus 3 from that tactical superiority. That is very good. That is very good. If this wasn't a river, I would be away absolutely laughing. Wonder if we, we, we can do something a little bit more spicy. Yeah, baby. Like this. Let's just completely surround this guy. Big stab there. Huge damage. Even attacking from the low ground, you can see I'm favoured now. Very good. Very good. Yeah, oh my, these numbers. I, I don't think the game is even telling the full story. Look at this. 41 combat strength from coming over here and striking. Four from the rear attack. Three from having friendly units nearby, which you always get. And then another three from the tactical superiority. From low ground, a decisive strike. They're not even going to try and fight into me. That's how um, overwhelming, overwhelming this is going to go. <laughs> Jeepers. I think we can put this on auto now and... What are you doing? Regrets. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Next turn, I'm going to have to redeploy these units myself, clearly. It seems to me like when I auto-resolved, the AI wasn't taking into account the fact that these units actually benefit more from aggressively standing next to each other and pushing the aggression instead of running away and hiding in advantageous places. Um, you know, like, look, now I'm actually losing to these peasants because of all their fortifications. Uh, so I'm just going to have to actually step back away from this a little bit and just try and pick on the ones that have actually come out of the city walls. Generally the best idea. Yeah, and you can see they're sort of slowly coming out because when they're behind the walls against a weaker unit like these ones in perhaps a slightly disadvantageous position, they do okay. Um... But when they're not in those ideal spots, I absolutely crush them. Like here, look at that. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it is overwhelming. Might even push a cheeky wall stab now that I'm surrounded. Uh, eh, eh. Ooh, that was a misplay. Now I'm in behind the walls. You've lost your wall advantage, you fool. That's a little better. Might defend with them. This is a fairly even strike, so we'll take that. In fact, we'll take you down move up. Another thing to remember as the Romans, particularly if you're marauding around the map with a reasonably strong unit of Praetorian Guards, firstly you're an expansionist. So don't forget your expansionist ability is now free, you can use it on foreign outposts like this one and not only destroy the outpost but actually convert it into your own. For no cost at all. Literally wouldn't cost me a thing. However, as an opportunistic player, I could also move over this way where I see a neutral city has appeared. I reckon my five Praetorian guards will be able to take this city, even with units here ready to defend. Generally a good idea to keep them in a relative cluster so that there's a lot of units surrounding each other. However, <laughs> in a fight this overwhelming, perhaps it doesn't quite matter. Moving this unit here has prevented them from bringing in their reinforcements very well. Not that it matters too much because you can see my Praetorian guards absolutely rolling over these sort of relatively weak, outdated units. Even the chariots, which are one of the scariest ancient era units, are no match for a couple of Praetorian guards. <laughs> so, so good! And watch this to finish this fight. This archer. <laughs> Can I cheese it even more by bringing more units over? I can. <laughs> Let's absolutely support this guy. Ready? Woof. 41 combat strength. Versus 6. Yikes. Boom. And my opportunistic Roman guards have taken this city. We're also just going to quickly insta-resolve a little battle here with a couple of units that were left by. But speaking of cities, it actually brings me to... Another couple of key points about the Romans. Firstly, when we take our new cities, they are likely to be less stable, particularly if they're actually part of a foreign empire as opposed to a neutral tribe. Another great strength of the Romans then is their triumphant arc, which provides influence and stability, and on a victorious city, it provides even more still. But either way, it's a wonderful way to add stability and influence to a territory. Super useful for you, as you're probably likely to be training a lot of units and building a lot of districts to support them. 
Another thing to consider is if you think maybe your guards have made it to the end of their life, they've fought some good fights, maybe you've got too many, it's hurting your economy too much, or whatever it may be, you can select particularly your very weak ones if you'd like and disband them into newly conquered cities, right? Redistributing some population. Now you may not want to if they're uh, particularly well trained or if you want to promote them later, but if you're looking to quickly get a newly captured city off the ground, it might not be a bad idea. In this case, I'm going to disband maybe three of them, keep the other two, heal them up, and now that I've got three populations into the city, I can put them all on industry and it can really complete the arc very quickly. Maybe I want some more industry in the city as well. Maybe I want to get my uh, influence generation up. Whatever I want to do with extra population that we've just <laughs> fed into the city, we can do just that. And I think that probably completes the Roman picture. They're incredibly strong. They've changed a lot since my tier list review. With recent changes from the last update and the one before, I think the Romans are in a particularly good spot to do very well indeed. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.